Dino Babers has lost the Syracuse fan base, and I think we just saw him coach his final game in the JMA Wireless Dome. But you're locked on Syracuse Monday. Let's not waste any time. Let's dive right in. You are locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, what's happening? Welcome to your Lockdown Syracuse Monday episode. It's your boy OV saying thank you so much for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen today and every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network in today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. It's a big episode. We have seen uh, Crapola hit the fan. We have seen enough. We've got some takes today. Strap in. We're going to have some fun uh, because there is a lot to talk about. And this fan base is up in arms. I'm fired up. Everyone I've talked to is fired up. It is time for a change. And I don't say that lightly. And I want to lead with this. I understand that these are people with families. I understand that this is someone's job. I understand that they are doing what they can do to succeed uh, and find success. With that, they're getting paid multi-million dollars a year. And with that comes added scrutiny. So here we go. Dino Babers has lost the Syracuse fan base. And I think his job and his career in Syracuse needs to come to a close at the end of this season. I don't think it needs to be right this second. You don't have to fire him on Monday before the press conference. But when this season comes to a close, I think Dino Baber's job needs to be terminated alongside. Last season, I would have said the same thing. The year before, I would have said the same thing. I have been saying this since 2020. It is time for something different. I do not think Dino Babers is the answer to fixing football in the 315. I don't think Dino Babers is the answer to bringing Central New York and Syracuse football back to national prominence. He has not done what he promised. He has not done what he came here in 2016 saying he was going to do. I am watching what Dino Babers has done. I saw an incredible season in 2018, courtesy of the man Eric Dungy, who doesn't even have faith in this program anymore. I haven't seen the success since then. I haven't seen the buildup since then. I haven't seen the recruiting parallel successful seasons, even though there have only been one or two. I am looking at Dino Baber's career, and it is leaving more than a little bit to be desired when all is said and done. He has a significant losing record in his time at Syracuse. When you look, and I forget who put this out there, um, up on Twitter today, Uh, When you look at his in-conference statistics, he has the second worst record in the Atlantic Coast Conference since he took over at Syracuse. He has a sub-500 career record at Syracuse with a 40 and 55 overall record. He has not done what you need to do to maintain this position. He was granted a contract extension in 2018. John Wildack said, you know, they need to extend on this. This is good for recruiting. A lot of people that I've talked to in in more national circles said that was a a relatively amateur extension from John Wildack. A very much a one season. I'm a new AD. Let me see if this works. I'm not sure. Uh, I love it. You can rationalize it in the moment. Uh, But I would have liked to see a little bit more before that lengthy extension came, where even at the end of last season, when things were struggling, when you go on a five-game losing skid, which we've now seen two seasons in a row of a five-game losing streak, when you go on a skid like that, and the buyout is still north of $10 million heading into this season, I would assume that the buyout has hit a point uh, next year, at the end of this year, that Syracuse can afford to buy Dino Babers out Uh, and find someone new. 
I want to talk about some comments Dino made after the game because I, I think one of the things that grinds my gears the most with Dino Babers is when there isn't that accountability aspect and we're, we're lacking that, you know, there is an issue here. There is a problem and do not look me in the face and do not look the Syracuse fan base in the eyes and say that things are fine and say that they're underestimating this team. This is not a fan base that is underestimating your football team. They are watching you play week in and week out and come up short. You are losing conference games by an average of 24 and a half points. That's embarrassing. That is not something that gives your fan base faith. That is not something that your fan base is jumping off the train for no reason about. You are coming up short significantly. You got embarrassed by a bad Virginia Tech team. You let a Boston College team that is beating bad teams and they think they're God's gift of football right now because they've won a few games in a row come into Syracuse and come into the Dome and win a game that was hideous. They looked terrible. You looked terribler. You're looking the fan base in the eye and saying that they need to have more faith in you. And he goes back to that recurring motif that he's used time and time again. Faith is belief in the things unseen if you want to get biblical. I still believe in this football team. That was his quote post game. He said it so many times, faith, belief without evidence. We have no evidence. Once again, Dino Babers, you cannot ask for blind loyalty and blind faith. I said this before, uh, and I said it before I jumped on, and I wasn't sure whether or not I want to say it, but Dino, even Santa leaves presents under the Christmas tree. There's something to latch on to there. You're giving people nothing. You beat four teams in the non-conference schedule that are the garbage of college football. You beat a terrible Colgate, a terrible Western Michigan, a terrible Purdue, and a terrible Army team. And then you play real football teams, and you look like a high school squad. That is why the fan base is frustrated. They're not blindly turning away from you because they have something better to do. They're not losing faith in this program because, oh, you know, I I wish they win a national championship. They're not asking for natties, Dino. They are asking for a team that doesn't quit. They're asking for a team that doesn't give up on itself. They're asking for a team that does the little things, that doesn't make the mental errors, that doesn't get penalized for stupidity week in and week out. They're looking for a head coach that buys into this team a head coach that makes decisions that can allow a team to win and a team to win and compete in games that maybe they shouldn't win. You're playing a Florida State team. That is outstanding. And you're playing as if you want to cover a 20-point spread, not as if you have nothing to lose. Let's see if we can shock the world. When Dino Babers came in, I did think there was a part of him that had that attitude, that had that mentality, taking you know gutsy play calls and leaving it all out on the field. I've seen that dwindle, and I've seen this turn more so into a coach that is scared and is worried and is trying to make things as okay as possible, right? You're trying to lose by the least. You're trying to not lose by the most points possible, and in doing so, you're losing games by more than you would if you played with some cojones, if you played with some grit, if you played with some gut. I said this when Syracuse was 6-0 last season, and I took a lot of ridicule for it. Dino Babers doesn't do anything as a head coach. He does not call offensive plays. He does not call defensive plays. His clock management is abysmal. His decision-making is horrid, and he brings in one decent recruit every three years. He cannot recruit. right? You can be a bad in-game coach if you're bringing in top 25, top 40 even, recruiting classes. Dino Babers has done the opposite of what you want to see. It peaked in 2018, and then it got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. What does he do at this point in time that warrants him remaining the head coach at Syracuse? I'm sorry. He is a likable individual. He is not a good football coach. We're going to talk about the macro. 
I don't think it's 1,000% Dino Babers' fault. There are some institutional issues. There are some Syracuse macro issues that we need to add to this conversation. But Dino Babers is not doing anything, in my eyes, and if you disagree with me, let me know. Comments over on Twitter, at LO underscore Syracuse. Uh, you can email us, I think. Find that on the uh, the Twitter. You can link it in there. Uh, contact me if you disagree. I'm open to the other side. But Dino Babers, in my eyes, in the eyes of every single person that I have talked to since this Boston College football game, I don't see a reason that he needs to be the head coach next season. Let's talk a little bit about our friends over at Athletic Brewing Company. Okay, this is going to be a tough start. It's time for our Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. I'll give it to LaQuint Allen. Uh, I like LaQuint. I'll say he was our our our, uh, our game changer of the week. And much like LaQuint Allen, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Athletic Brewing Company has a completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. Their brews are great tasting and award-winning and beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. They're fit for all times. So you can drink them anytime, anywhere, and make any activity even more enjoyable. Plus, there's no hangovers ever. So you can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKDOWN to get 15% off your first online order. That's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. That's near beer. Exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. All right. This is not an easy episode. Right, It is never a good feeling to come on and record yourself calling for someone else's job. And I, I want that on the record. Right, I, I'm not here having the time of my life tearing Dino Babers apart and calling for his position at Syracuse to be terminated. That's not a fun thing. It's not an exciting thing. But it is something that needs to be talked about. And we have reached a point where I can no longer rationalize the counter argument. You could have said last season, oh, and you're being too rash. You're being a little bit too extreme. You've got some issues here. Let's pump the brakes. Let's see what happens. We've surpassed that. I can't, I don't, there's nothing I need to hear right now on the other side that can convince me otherwise. I put a tweet out, and we'll talk about that to close the show out today, asking for your input uh, over on Twitter. And I'm 100%, no one wants him back. There was no one saying, well, this. There was no, eh. Right? It's, it's 100% right now of people that I've talked to. That is something that I can't stand. And here's the big question, right? A lot of people will pose the, well, who are you going to bring in that's better than Dino Babers, right? Even, even the big name people with connections to Syracuse might not be a better option. The Coach O connection that people like to throw out there. The Dan Mullen connection that people like to throw out there. Right. Are they a, a shoe in answer? No. Right. Tony White, I've heard thrown out there. There are a number of other people thrown out there as well with some ties to Syracuse. But I, I know that they're not a shoe in. And I know that they might not even want to come to Syracuse because Syracuse is a difficult market to recruit to. But I do want to say before I dive into some other issues, is that you need to. As John Wildack, the athletic director for Syracuse, first of all, if John Wildack keeps his job, because there are a number of people calling for his head as well. But if you are John Wildack, you need to show the Syracuse football fan base that you care enough to make this switch, that you care enough to invest the three to four million that would be Dino Babers' buyout going into the last season. And it could even be less than that. But I'll say, you know, conservatively, it's three to four million and the high end. You need to show this fan base that you care enough to get Dino Babers out of here and find some fresh blood and find a new approach and say, we're not going to throw this into another year of garbage and another year of, well, let's give him the lame duck year where he can do what he needs to do. You need to make a decision for next season to bring somebody else in to at least give this fan base a new hope something to latch on to, something to be excited about with regards to Syracuse football. Because if Dino Babers comes back in 2024, I think there are a lot of people that will not buy season tickets. 
There are a lot of people that will not attend Syracuse football games. And there are a lot of people that you will burn the bridge of Syracuse football with and getting them back on pace, getting them back on the hype train, getting them once again fired up for Syracuse football becomes an even greater burden than you could possibly imagine. Now let's talk some things because Syracuse has not done an incredible job as an institution to make this a destination for up and coming coaches. And I think that's what people would want the most is not necessarily the older coach that's that's been at the big show and failed to come here as much as someone on the up and up that can have a three or four year career and then go to the next step in their coaching tree or in their coaching career, right? Maybe they go to, to the top of the top uh, in, in Power 5 football. Maybe they go to the NFL, whatever it is. But I think Syracuse would best benefit from someone on the up and up. But what makes Syracuse a destination? It's a hard place to recruit to. It is not an institution that is historically, especially in recent years, invested in football monetarily to the point where you need them to succeed. There have been some recent shifts, right? The new athletic stuff with regards to football has been important. Uh, They seem to be investing a little bit more uh, in extra personnel, uh, paying assistant coaches and uh, coordinators a little bit more than they were. I don't know if they're at the point to be truly competitive. Dino Babers, I believe I read, has a top 50 annual salary in college football which is above what Syracuse is in national eyes right now in terms of a top 50 team. There are some things as of late that have started to help this argument. But because of that behind the eight ball sort of approach to things, and you saw it with facilities, it took them way longer than it should have to start upgrading because of their approach to NIL that was a little bit slow. When you push a guy like Adam Weitzman, out of your school, out of your organization, a guy giving you millions upon millions upon millions. And you say, "Eh, get away. We don't want your money, Adam Weitzman. And you wait another year before launching a collective in Orange United that brings some potential. I don't know if they can, but they claim they can bring six to nine million dollars worth of NIL money a year into Syracuse. If that's the case, that is a driving factor. That is something a coach can work with. But you do need to offer whoever comes next. And that's a conversation I don't think I'm ready to have today. I'd like to put some more research into some candidates, some potential guys. I'm sure there are people that will put out a list of names that you should look into. I will read those articles. I'm interested in who people suggest, right? There are some obvious ones that should make lists, the ones with Syracuse ties. I am not an expert on, you know, offensive coordinators or defensive coordinators that are poised to make a jump to head coaching. I am not an expert in non-Power 5 coaches that are ready to make that jump. I would need to do some research. I'm not giving you that today. But I will say, Syracuse as an institution needs to do a little bit on top of, all right, Babers, you're gone. Here's something else, right? Dino Babers has put this team in a position uh, and put this fan base in a position where there isn't excitement about Syracuse football. And, you know, don't even get me fired up because the stupidest humanly possible thing is happening too, where Syracuse says, let's not play our last home game at home. Let's actually move the game closer to our opponent than it is to Central New York. Why are you playing in the Yankee Stadium when you could play a home game? Why are you playing Pitt in Yankee Stadium when you could play a home game? Why are you not doing this for your fans? Playing in Yankee Stadium isn't cool anymore if you're Syracuse football. You do it once every three years. There's no more novelty to it. And you said to your fans, yeah, that season ticket package that you're going to pay the same price for this season, it's going to come with one less game. Oh, and to make it up for you, we're sorry there's one less game. Here's a ticket to the Canisius basketball game. That should even things out. No, right? Do some things as a university as an athletic department that make things better for the coach, for the fan base, and elevate. All right, we're going to go to Twitter. After a quick break here, I want to hear your thoughts. We've got a number of them. I think we've got 10 or 15 uh, that we'll go through to wrap up the show today. Uh, But let's chat about our friends over at LinkedIn. 
in these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100 percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. Isn't this a great conversation? Right. Syracuse. Get rid of Dino Babers. Who are the most qualified candidates? That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. Spread the word that you're hiring. Hey, people, Syracuse, they need a new head coach. There are simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, final stretch here on your Locked On Syracuse Monday episode. We are talking uh, Dino Babers and the the possible termination of his career and uh, the end of his head coaching tenure at Syracuse. I'm moving off to the side for those of you on YouTube. I'm going to bring the tweets up. Uh, I went to Twitter uh, Sunday afternoon and said, jumping on in a few hours, what are the Dino thoughts? And I figured I'd just read through them. Orange 44 Pride just needs to go. He's never been able to recruit and develop high school kids. He was brought in to hire, or he was brought in here to run the veer and shoot offense. He's done such a poor job recruiting offensive players. They had to abandon the system that he was brought in to run. Yeah, right. This is a guy that was preaching this, you know, fastest game on turf, the fastest thing you could ever see. Uh, and, and you lost it. It's not there. We're missing it right now. You don't see that. The orange is the new fast where it's more like orange is the new incredibly mediocre speed uh, that you could possibly watch a football game at. Syracuse Superfan, 4-5 and five football, 0-0 zero, zero basketball, says fire Dino and Wild Hat. That's all that needs to be said. I think it's time for some changes. We saw it on the basketball side of things. Uh, we're excited. There's this new energy over there. Maybe it's time to do the same thing with football. Maybe it's time to do the same thing at the top of this athletic department. A Vic says he had his chances. Time for a new voice, someone who can recruit a real quarterback and develop an offense. I will say this, and some people might have this thought. Uh, there is a decent recruiting class coming in, uh, led by Tremble and Williams. Uh, some talented players, four-star guys, or maybe they've dwindled from four stars. That's a Syracuse effect. Um, but the recruiting as a whole has not been what it needs to be. And I think that is the biggest driver for me because you can escape being the type of in-game coach Dino is, which is a non-existent in-game coach, uh, by having good recruiting classes, but there haven't been good recruiting classes. Um, Breen says, what will it take to fire him? At least give us a little hope. We need to find a young head coach with a vision. Even if it's here for a, a few years before climbing, we need to start building something from scratch. I like that take, right? That's what I was sort of saying from the university, even if. The, you know, the guy you have to bring in isn't incredible. Even if this isn't the most highly touted job in college football, you need to do something that gives this fan base hope, something to believe in. Uh, I, I like the idea, a young coach, uh, even if it's a stepping stone for something bigger. Mackey118 says, we need more NIL money. Should have kept a healthy relationship with the scrap metal guy. Oh, yeah, didn't I just talk about that? Uh, NIL money is a huge thing, and Syracuse has been slow in NIL. Uh, they seem like they're doing some good things as of late, but I'll throw the caveat or the, the concern in here one more time. There's no rule that says you can't have a collective and a really wealthy man that wants to donate to your program as well, right? You can have both things, and it's not an issue. It would be nice to have Weitzman back. It would be nice to have that funding back. It would be nice to have that relationship back. Uh, but that is gone. And NIL-wise, you are uh, needing a lot of people to donate money to make up for a fraction of what Weitzman was willing to give uh, from his own pocket. Uh, Freddie says, no bowl game equals gone. Even if they make a bowl game, I think it would take a great 2024 season for them to renew his contract. I'm not even sure a bowl game is enough to keep Dino Babers right now. This is a fan base. That has lost it with coach. This is a fan base that was chanting fire Babers at the football game. This is a fan base that was turning to Wild X box at the Syracuse BC game 
and telling him it was his fault. This is your fault for what was going on. I'm not sure that's even enough. Got a couple more to go through. Uh, he's got to go. And the new coach for 2024 should be Jamie Chadwell from Liberty. I don't know if you want to leave Liberty to come to Syracuse, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely sure that you need a new coach for 2024. Uh, maybe. I wouldn't hate it. Got a good little, uh, good little spark over at Liberty. But I don't know uh, if you want to make the jump right now. If you want to stay put, uh, is Syracuse a big enough jump for Liberty? Yikes. That's a terrifying question for the reality of Syracuse football. Uh, but that's a, a real thing. Noah Blanchard says, if he miraculously gets us to a bowl game, that's the only way he keeps his job. Next year's recruiting class and the lack of good available coaches are the main reason he still has a job right now. Tony White would be a good fit if they do end up firing him. Uh, I'll say the same thing I just said. I'm not sure a bowl game is enough right now, um, but maybe it is. Maybe Syracuse wants to be cheap and not buy him out for a few million at the end. Uh, I think you got to show a commitment that you're ready to see uh, what else you can do. Uh, Sam says, should have been fired after the 1-10 in 10 season in 2020. Would have loved that, but he'd already been extended, I believe. Uh, and so the buyout would have been astronomical. So I don't know if it was possible, but at the 1-10 in 10 season, uh, I was a little bit worried. We like to say there were two outliers. Our Noons Magician had a great uh, comment about this, about the two outlier seasons, the 10-3 and 3 season and the 1-10 in 10 season. Uh, that was the bad outlier. Uh, the good outlier got him a contract extension, and the bad outlier had no repercussions, uh, which doesn't seem fair to the fan base. Uh, Jay Ness says, fire Babers, fire Dino, fire Dino Babers. Enough said. Yeah, well said. Keep it at that. Uh, two more, I think, maybe three more. Rob Boris says, the only way to justify keeping Dino is to win out, win a bowl game. That might do it. If you win your last three uh, or four, what's left on the schedule? They are four and three. Five. There's three games left. Sorry. Uh, you win your last three. You win a bowl game, and you're eight and six. No, eight and five. My God, I can't do math today. Eight and five. Maybe that's enough if they're dominant wins. Uh, Martin eight says, "How is he still the head coach?" Your question and your your word is better or as good as mine is, Dylan. Uh, I did not have the gift to play gift gif whatever you want to call it. Uh, but this is. A man dunking a bag of garbage into a trash can, which is the perfect way to wrap up our show today. Dino Babers, you're a good guy. Uh, you gave incredible quotes about things that have nothing to do with the questions that the reporters asked, but you killed the pop culture metaphors when it was time, uh, and you had some fun answers. Best of luck wherever you are next, but it is time. John Wildeck, maybe the same for you. Um, I say this and I'll close with this. Uh, I understand that these are people with families. I understand that, right? This, this is tough. Uh, it's never good to lose a job. It's never good to have this be, you know, the frustration, the uproar of the people that are supposed to be your supporters. But I think it is a big enough indicator based on the conversations I've had since Friday night, based on the tweets I've seen since Friday night. This is not a few people speaking loudly for a few people. This is the masses coming together in support of the same thing. And you make a hell of a lot of money, Dino Babers. I'm sure you'll be fine monetarily and that you can be okay. You can live in Syracuse for all I care. Stay in central New York, start a charity, do some things, fundraising events, whatever you want to do. You can stay in central New York. Love to have you here. But uh, I'd rather have someone else coaching this football team and that's where we will close things out. Thank you for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen today and every day. If you want to add to the conversation, do so in the comments on YouTube over at Twitter at LO underscore Syracuse. You got something I missed, something you want me to talk about. We got basketball today when this episode comes out. I'll be on Tuesday post game for the season opener. I might even do a live episode after the season opener tomorrow night. Syracuse plays New Hampshire to open up the basketball season, and my God, basketball could not have come at a better time. Thank you for making this your first listen today and every day. I'm Owen Valentine. Be kind. Make somebody smile today. Do something nice for somebody. I'll see you at the game, maybe. I don't know. I'm feeling a little under the weather. I might not be there, but that's okay. See you tomorrow. Peace.